How's it going, Radical viewers? Grim Gaddy right back into another Legends of the West video, and this is actually a very special request. So special that it's breaking my daily upload rule, number one, and it's breaking my no request rule. That said, very special circumstances have allowed me to forgive both those things. <laughs> because this was requested for something that I think many of us can relate to. Uh... <laughs> The radical viewer that requested this used to watch this with his grandfather, who sadly has passed away, but he wanted to kind of pay like a small homage to him and the memories that they shared together. This request comes from Tyndall Clark, and we're doing The Rifleman. Now just for the sheer kicks of it, let's go ahead and roll that clip, shall we? Chuck Connors. You know, I gotta say, like, I feel kind of bad that my experience with Westerns isn't back in the black and white era and all that, because some of these scenes are just outright amazing. And the fact that some of these people literally almost died doing some of these stunts is also freaking amazing. For those curious what The Rifleman is, it, it was a TV series back in the late 50s and early 60s, and it was something to behold. Like, it was ridiculous. Anyway, before I start gabbing on any further, let's go ahead and just break down the outfit, shall we? <clears throat> Pardon me, as my throat is scratchy as all hell. Now this outfit, like a bunch of others I've done, is a little hard to pin down right because, again, I'm missing a lot of stuff I wish I had and other things are just unavailable to me. I may actually do an online version of this later on after I do my uh, request catch up. But for now, let's go ahead and break this down, shall we? First off with the hat. Now Chuck Connors, the star that plays the main character in the movie, he wears a kind of classic modern western hat. It's got a nice curled brim to it. It's got a pinch in the front and it was really hard to find anything that really fit that in the single player. Which seems to be a common occurrence. Like I've come up with a few options. The soccer hat still stood out to me though the brim is not anywhere near curled up like I would like. The Panama hat is also a really decent choice. But I don't like the fact it doesn't come in the kind of darker brown I wanted. I said it does kind of look the part. Arthur's hat also freaking looks the part, it's just too dark. It looks like crap on me. What I ended up settling on actually was the Paragon hat. Which does come in two different shades of a darker brown, though they're a little too dark for my taste. But I love the curl of the brim and I try to want to get that look down. We have this nice kind of dark chocolate one that, again, is too dark, or this more kind of faded look to it, which I actually really appreciated. No coats. This, this is where the entire ensemble gets kind of weird and iffy, because throughout the series, he changes the outfit out quite a bit. Or I may very well be looking at book covers. I'm not sure what I'm looking at when I look for colored photos of this stuff. But there are some moments where he's wearing a vest that's dark brown leather, which again is outright unavailable to me currently, save for, yeah, our good old classic man with no name look here. Though that could work very well. But I ended up going with, why did I close completely out of that? That was dumb of me. The buckskin vest. Because it kind of sold the look and it is leather. Now another option, if you're not too picky about it being leather, is the traditional vest, which does come in like the perfect shade of brown I would want for this. But of course, you only need a vest. In fact, there's quite a bit of the movie, the uh, movie, wow, sorry, TV series, where I'm fairly certain he's not even wearing a vest. I say that, but honestly, I haven't seen it. I need to. I really do. For shirts, I see two different ones that are worn throughout the series. I see a light blue kind of collar shirt like what we got here with the sleeves rolled up. There's also a kind of lightish tan version that's one flat color, which sadly I cannot replicate for the life of me and still get the shirt to look right. But the everyday shirt does come in a couple of options that do work wonders for both looks. Moving on to the pants. 
again, I have so many options. <laughs> he does wear some fairly nice dark blue jeans throughout the series, but he also occasionally swaps to like this darker brown that I don't think are actually jeans. In fact, I think they're more like, say, the talent pants are the everyday pants in roughly this color. Let's go ahead and check that out really quick as I pass them. Yeah, that's actually like a dead on perfect look too. So options. Again, I'm giving a lot of options with this one because there's a lot about it that is a little different here and there. Suspenders, he doesn't really wear suspenders. And again, I think at this point they weren't really dealing with uh, suspenders and the Western movies. They were just kind of going with pants and belt loops. So I would say dealer's choice. Uh, if I were to go off just a guess of what he might wear, because Love's Up is very simple and very kind of I can pick it off at pick it up at a thrift store kind of thing. I would say, yeah, just the brown cotton ones would probably do wonders. If I had to guess off the top of my head. No chaps for boots. I wanted to go with something that looked a little more modern because I don't think they're really doing much else when it came to the wardrobe options for the main character. So I went with these sleek riding boots in this kind of nice dark brown. Though you could go a shade darker. Again, it's really hard to tell. A lot of this was shot all in black and white, so... Or I could be wrong, and actually a lot of it was shot in color, and I just didn't do my research properly. One of those two things happened. No masks, no bandanas, no neckwear. He does wear gloves in a couple scenes. Including, if I'm not mistaken, the intro I'm using for this. I need to go rewatch that again. I edit this stuff on the fly, my apologies for that. The best fit for the look, I would say, is the range gloves, though his are more of a dark brown rather than a black which kind of threw me off. If you can forgive the fuzzy, uh, the legendary Buck and Fox range gloves actually are the perfect color. But again, fuzz. I say do his choice. Or like a lot of this outfit, you could just go with no gloves at all. Because why the hell not? Weapon equipment, I'll leave up completely the dealer's choice at this point. You could go with Arthur's standard look, you go with the upgraded stuff, or you could throw on some of the stuff you got from challenges. I would say Arthur's look is perfect and simple enough to where it really just kind of sells the character. That's it. That's it for the outfit. Now, for a fun little addition, because only the outfit itself was requested, I'm going to go one step further, and we're going to go ahead, <clears throat> as my throat completely cuts out, and we're going to go make his lever action, or at least as close as we can get. So, one quick little cutaway and we'll be right back. And here we have the ever infamous rifleman's, well, rifle. <laughs> now, getting this was also kind of hard just because, number one, the show was in black and white, so that was fun. Uh, that and the guns haven't aged well. I actually found some actual pictures of the real thing that was sold at auction. I won't throw out the number they sold it for, but holy crap was it a lot. So I kind of went with that interpretation just because it's about the best I got. I will throw some options out though for other things. Uh, number one, <clears throat> breaking down the gun piece by piece, black and barrel. For the frame, I kind of went with a brown steel because it is gunmetal, so it is going to be that kind of off color. That said, if you do decide to go with like a newer look, I would go with the blued steel, just so it looks off from the barrel. After all, gunmetal and all that is always going to look a little off from the black and stuff. For the hammer, I would do it the same as you did for the frame, so either brown steel or blued. Change that back. For the lever, now this gets kind of interesting because his gun has an elongated and bigger loop that he actually has a screw in, in order to basically fire every time he actually did the lever action. So every time he would cock it and load another round in, when he would bring it back, it would just fire again because that screw is hitting the trigger. I always thought that was really, really interesting. And it also explains how he got freaking 12 shots off in less than 5 seconds. Though I've seen quicker from people that just had no time on their hands and are fantastic at what they do. 
That all said, because of that simple fact, I decided to go with something that differentiated the trigger and the lever from the rest of the gun, so I just made those suckers steel. I thought it looked really good. Of course, you could always go with another color, say brass, or even black and still would work. I, Because of these, the fact these are modified on the gun in the show, I wanted to show that in some regard. And for the sight, I just matched it to the barrel this time. You could match it to the frame and go either browned or blued steel. I would say dealer's choice on that. No engravings, no carvings. For varnish, I went back to my old classic mahogany, as it has that nice reddish kind of tint to it that just really sells the look, kind of glows, and turns out really stands the test of time with how the rifle actually looks now. It's actually really well kept. I also love the fact the saddle ring is actually right there on the gun here, too. Huh, weird. But that's it. That is the rifleman and his rifle. I'm gonna go ahead and equip this. I'm gonna run with this for a bit. Seems like fun. I really dig it. I mean, it's got that nice, real kind of classic feel to it, you know? Anyway. As usual, I really hope you all enjoyed, and again, my apologies that I'm kind of breaking my own rules doing this video. It was a special case, and I felt it was very warranted. And a big thank you to Tyndall Clark for the suggestion and for sharing their story with me. And thank you all for <laughs> hopefully understanding that's why this video is being put out. And by all means, thank him if you did enjoy it, because I got a kick out of doing this and just looking up some of this information. I still can't believe how much that gun sold for. Holy crap. Anyway, also a big kudos to Tyndall Clark and my sympathies for your loss, and I hope that this helps. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I've been through the same thing, and it sucks no matter what happens to what people do. But again, I, I do hope this small little gesture did something for you. Anyway, I digress. I hope you all enjoyed. Till next time, kids. Take care now. Bye-bye then.